Hello everybody, this is Vincent from Elegant and Vintage Entertainment, and today we're going to listen to two of my absolute favorite microphones, Flexible Audio's Flea 47 and Flea 49. <music> I was first introduced to Flexible Audio through the YouTube channel Tube Tests. They had a couple of videos on there comparing the uh, Neumann M249, which has a different connector but is essentially the same uh, microphone as a, the M49, to a Flea 49, and the uh, Neumann U47 and Telefunken reissue U47 to their Flea 47. And I have to say, I was really impressed with the overall quality. I personally preferred the Flea next to the Telefunken. Now I know that that is an older version of Telefunken's U47 and they've revised it since, but still, I was intrigued. When I was making my Emulations vs. Clones video, my friend Jim offered to bring over his Flexible Audio Flea 47. And when I heard that next to a lot of my more budget-friendly mics, I knew then and there what, the, you know, why you paid more money for uh, the Flea 47. I thought it was a really wonderful sounding, 3D sounding microphone. So knowing that a 49 was more suitable for my voice, or at least fit my aesthetic better, I went out of my way to try a number of different uh, incarnations of the Flea 49. I was able to demo Vintage King's demo model, which had a K47 in it and the stock tube. I was also able to go to Calistro Music that had a Flea 49 with an AC701 and the stock M7 capsule and a Flea 249, which had their stock M7 capsule and this stock tube. Um, after trying a whole bunch of them out, I actually picked up a Flea 49 with the uh, K47 and the, uh, and the stock tube. Flexible audio microphones are made over in Slovakia, in Eastern Europe. Like many companies like them, they started as a manufacturer for replacement parts for vintage originals and slowly began developing their own microphones made from all of their replacement parts. The 47 and the 49 being their most popular models. They also have a 48, a 12, a 50, and their own line of next generation microphones all influenced by vintage models, but with their own flexible audio twist. Many of their replacement parts are also found in other brands replicas. Over the years they've grown a great reputation. Each of these microphones comes in a regular box with a custom foam insert. They come with a beautifully designed vintage looking power supply, vintage style cable with vintage connectors, a small dust pouch to go over the microphone when not in use in the studio, a manual. The 47 comes with a vintage style spider mount and the 49 comes with a vintage style yoke mount. There's also a switch on the back of the power supply that allows you to switch between European and American standards. You can also order your own custom case from Flexible Audio themselves the Flea 47 retails for 3,750 US dollars, and the Flea 49 retails at $4,295. Now, if you watch the used ads, sometimes they come up for a little bit less, but in general, you're still talking around $4,000 for each of them. Now, it's important to talk about the differences between the uh, flexible audio replicas and their vintage counterparts, the main difference being the tube circuit. Now, the um, Flea 47 uses an EF12 tube, which is similar and in the same family as the VF14 tube, but again, there's a slightly different harmonic quality to it. And of course, the Neumann M49 uses an AC701, and Flea uses a Russian tube, the 6S6B-V tube, um, which is very popular. In Europe, they use it over the 5840 which is more commonly used by American manufacturers. But they both do the same thing, which is sort of get close to the AC701 sound. Although, if we're being honest, the tubes are always gonna be the difference in the quality of sound when you're looking at replicas, because there is something special about the VF14 and the AC701. Now, a lot of people are always wondering what the difference between a 47 style microphone and a 49 style microphone is. So today we're going to listen to it in a few different contexts. I've got some guitar, I've got some trumpet, and I've got four different styles of music. Now obviously it's me and my voice is more operatic no matter what, but 
the quality of the arrangements is different and how they would sit in a mix is gonna sound different because of that. So what I've got is a classical setting, a jazz setting, a rock setting, and then a pop setting with some harmonies so we'll hear how they stack. For this shootout, I recorded both microphones cleanly through my stock Apollo Pre's with no unison plugins engaged. There is no EQ or compression on the way in, although there is some in the processed samples. Now, for the unison preamps, if you hit them a little too hard, they start to distort. So for most of these samples, I've engaged the pad. Almost all the vocal samples because, well, I got a pretty big voice and I can get pretty loud. The trumpet. However, for the guitar samples, we didn't engage the pad at all. We're gonna listen to all of these samples raw and then hear them processed in a mix. Now for the guitar and the trumpet, there's no mix to go with them, but I did process them a little bit and you'll hear them with a little reverb. So let's take a listen to all these samples and then we'll talk about what we're hearing.
È sempre misero chi le sa fida, chi le confida, mal cauto il core, pur mai non senta si felice al fiero, chi su quel seno non li bammore, la donna mobile, qual più mal vento, muta da tu e di pensier e di pensier Sempre misero chi le sa fida, chi le confida, mal cauto il core, pur mai non senta si felice al fiero, chi su quel seno non li bammore, la donna è mobile, qual più mal vento, muta da cielo. Di pensier, e di pensier. Sempre misero chi le sa fida, chi le confida, mal cauto il core, pur mai non senta si felice al fiero, chi su quel seno non li bammore, la donna mobile, qual più mal vento, muta da cielo.
tue di pensiero, di pensiero. Sometimes you gotta get away, sometimes, well, sometimes you gotta get away, sometimes. The girls are always roaring whenever I go, with Sinatra lightly playing on the radio, play poker in the back room, no, I think I'll stay. So I'll sip my gin and tonic and sit back down to play. There's a secret place where the mood is right. A place to help me ease my mind tonight. With no guns and no cares, there's no cause to fight, no. Sometimes you gotta get away, sometimes, well, sometimes you gotta get away, sometimes. The girls are always roaring whenever I go, with Sinatra lightly playing on the radio, play poker in the back room, no, I think I'll stay. So I'll sip my gin and tonic and sit back down to play. There's a secret place where the mood is right. A place to help me ease my mind tonight. With no guns and no cares, there's no cause to fight, no. Sometimes you gotta get away, sometimes, well, sometimes you gotta get away, sometimes. The girls are always roaring whenever I go, with Sinatra lightly playing on the radio, play poker in the back room, no, I think I'll stay. So I'll sip my gin and tonic and sit back down to play. There's a secret place where the mood is right, a place to help me ease my mind tonight with no guns and no cares. There's no Sometimes you gotta get away, sometimes, well, sometimes you gotta get away, sometimes. The girls are always roaring whenever I go, with Sinatra lightly playing on the radio, play poker in the back room, no, I think I'll stay. So I'll sip my gin and tonic and sit back down to play. There's a secret place where the mood is right, a place to help me ease my mind tonight with no guns and no cares. There's no cause to fight, no. The dream goes on And there is no waking through the night Have I done something wrong? Or is it just in my nature to fight? 
I try and I try, but I'm still going down, and I don't know why, but it feels I'm gonna drown, and now, now I'm alone, I wish I could fly, but I'm heavy as stone, so damn all and I swear before God, I'll make it on my own. I can make it on my own. Make it on my The dream goes on, and there is no waking through the night. Have I done something wrong, or is it just in my nature to fight? I try and I try, but I'm still going down, and I don't know why. But it feels I'm gonna drown And now, now I'm alone I wish I could fly But I'm heavy as stone So damn all the odds And I swear before God I'll make it on my own I can make it on my own, make it on my own. The dream goes on, and there is no waking through something wrong or is it just in my nature to fight I try and I try but I'm still going down and I don't know why but it feels I'm in my nature to fight I try and I try but I'm still going down and I don't know why but it feels I'm
When you're looking back at me, I can't help but let you in. Deep within your Spanish eyes, I know my heart's your temptation. I fall hard and I fall fast, filled with love's burning desire. Deep within your Spanish eyes, I can feel my soul on fire. Lost at the touch of your hands In ways you can't even understand Yeah, 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 yeah When you're looking back at me I can't help but let you in Deep within your Spanish eyes, I know my heart's your temptation. I fall hard and I fall fast, filled with love's burning desire. Deep within your Spanish eyes, I can feel my soul on fire. Complete control Lost at the touch of your hands In ways you can't even understand Yeah can't help but let you in Deep within your Spanish eyes I know my heart's your temptation I fall hard and I fall fast Filled with love's burning desire Deep within your Spanish eyes I can feel my soul on fire Okay, 
Now we've listened to a whole bunch of different samples of these microphones. And I'm gonna say, no matter which microphone you chose is your favorite, you're not wrong. Both of these mics are incredible and I don't think there's anything we recorded that couldn't be used in a setting. Do I think that maybe I lean one way or another on some of the samples? And I, I think I do. I think there were certain samples I really love the, what the 49 does. I think the pop sample, for instance, it cuts a little better, but yet the 47 in that sample has this real warmth and sort of like a record sound. So I don't think anybody would be wrong saying they preferred one or another. There are a couple of things we need to understand about the different sonic qualities of the two microphones. The first is that the Flea 49 is a little bit more neutral. It's not as boosted, which means that sometimes it can sound like it's got a little bit more low end and a little bit more high end. But it's really just that the 47 is actually just boosted more, which gives it more of an in your face quality, particularly in the low mids which of course it's known for and it's what it's famous for and what you use a 47 for is that low mid beautiful push. Now the 49 also has a better dynamic range. And this is where things come to a head for me. When I was first starting my microphone journey, I bought a Peluso 2247 SE. Now, obviously I don't think it's in the same league as the Fleece. Um, it's a little bit brighter, but it was still a solid microphone. And there was something I noticed, particularly when I was recording opera. Um, and that was when I would go for a crazy big high note, which anybody who's ever recorded an opera singer knows is loud as all hell. It wouldn't seem as loud when you listen to back and playback because the microphone has this natural compression that sort of tames it. It's actually one of the reasons we like it because in a pop setting, that's great. In a rock setting, that can also be really great because we're tightening the whole thing up with compression to really give it that forward sound. But in opera, where I'm gonna use less compression, if any compression at all, it didn't sound right. I shouldn't have to you know, take my fader and push it all the way up because the microphone itself isn't giving me that volume pop that my voice is actually doing. And that's one of the reasons you see, uh, especially in the old school in the, in the 50s, you see a lot of opera singers using the 49. Now, usually when we think of spot miking, we think of, you know, two to three feet for an opera singer these days. Back then it was actually a bit further. You, you might see them actually above a, a bunch of opera singers um, aimed at them <laughs> and them singing into it. That's why this microphone became more prevalent on uh, classical instrumentation and operatic singing. Now the 47, I mean, what can you say about it? Sinatra, Beatles, I mean, you name a great, especially male singer, and you'll see them usually on a 47. 47 has this ability to make a small voice seem just that much bigger. A big voice like mine can almost seem a little bit too enhanced, but it works beautifully. Um, I know that, you know, Jim came over here and he, when we tried all of these microphones, the, the different advanced audio microphones I had, the Slate virtual microphone system, it just wiped the floor with anything and nothing even came close. And it had nothing to do with the budget. It had to do with the way a 47 captures sound. Now, I'm curious what you guys think of these. I mean, these microphones retail for nearly $4,000. The Flea 49 being a little bit more expensive than the Flea 47 because, well, the circuit's a little bit more comprehensive. So if I'm being honest, I know most of you out there aren't gonna be running out to spend $4,000 on a microphone. It's a big expense, especially if you're working in a home studio. For me, it made a lot of sense. I'm a professional studio vocalist and I do so much stuff in this studio that has to be sent on to big film studios, commercials, you name it, and it has to sound pro quality. It often has to match up with stuff that's being done in big studios around the country. And so investing in something like this made a lot of sense for me, now I love the 47, but for me, the M49 is sort of my go-to. I've tried old vintage models of these guys, and even when in the room with some really great models, the M49 does something to my voice that's really special. I also found that it did something really nice to my wife's voice. So if I'm being honest, these days, I have two Flea 49s in my studio. Now I got the opportunity to try a few different configurations for the Flea 49. Now the M49 I fell in love with at the Barbershop Studios was actually a C version, but it had a K47. So after weighing different sonic qualities, I, I did like sort of an unscientific mic shootout and weighing all the sonic qualities of all those recordings, 
I decided to go with the K47 in both of my Fleet 49s. There was something about the way the K47 handled the high part of my voice that I thought really shined, whereas the M7 sort of mellowed certain things out and beefed up the mid-range, which my voice really doesn't need. As for the tube, there's something really special about the AC701K, but I had a hard time giving into it. I sort of think we should leave those tubes alone for the guys who are trying to maintain those old beautiful microphones. But that's just me. I also felt that for the style of music that I was doing and the way I like to EQ my voice and my wife's voice, that I could get along without the AC701. Although I will admit, there are some days I I think about calling Ivan up and saying, hey, I'm gonna send both my mics in. I wanna put AC701s in them. Because tubes do matter. They're the main reason why neither of these mics sound exactly like their vintage counterparts. I will say that the Flea 49 with the M7 and the AC701, the bottom end really matched the uh, real M49 I tried at the barbershop studios. But the top end was more similar with the K47 capsule than the M7 capsule. With all of the really expensive replicas out there, I think if you're gonna be spending over $4,000 on a microphone, you really need to consider trying out a, a flea microphone. Uh, at $4,000 plus, it's really not about whether or not the microphone's gonna sound good. It's about whether that company's ideal U47 sound and M49 sound and 251 and C12 sound matches with your ultimate U47, M49, 251, C12 sound, etc. on and on. So if you haven't tried the flea mics and you're really thinking of investing in one of those other companies, I'd suggest you try them first. They tend to have a more vintagey kind of sound to them. They do this vintage thing really well. And that's why they're in my studio. I want to thank my friend, singer-songwriter Jim Caputo for lending me his Flea 47 for the video. I want to thank my friend Kyle for coming over and playing a little guitar for us. And I want to thank my friend Jack for providing some trumpet tracks for us to listen to, as well as the arrangements for Sometimes You Gotta Get Away and On My Own. I also want to thank my friend Andy for providing the uh, beautiful arrangement for Spanish Eyes. For those of you who are interested, Spanish Eyes is available on iTunes and Amazon, etc. Thank you for joining me today. If you like what you saw and you want to see more videos like it, please like and subscribe to the channel. Share the video, talk about it. I want to hear what you have to say. Which microphone did you guys like? Did you like the 49? Did you lean towards the 47? Is there any other microphones you'd like to see featured on the show? Please let me know in the comments below and uh, let's talk about it. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I wish you guys all the best. Mm -hmm.